Afternoon, people. Welcome to the masterclass. It's masterclass time, guys. Uh, my network is unstable. Why is my network unstable? Okay, it's fine. So, guys, today I'm sitting in a different room. You might hear the sound is a little bit echoey, you know. So, you must tell me if you're losing me. Tell me if the sound is perfect. Um, but, yeah, guys, thank you for, for coming through, you know. Um, Okti, thank you for coming through. Kewutse Pile, thank you for coming through. But, Tobile, thank you for coming through. Um, yeah, guys, it's, it's, it's master class time. You know how we do. Um, Mr. Gift, I see you. Spo, I see you. Mamtolo, I see you. Fifi. The dramatic one, I see you. Okay, I'm audible, 100%. Um, yeah, guys, I think let's tap the screen. Let's get to 1,000K, 1,000K, 1K, so that we can kick off um, the master class, you know, while TikTok is fetching some of our people. But in the meantime, guys, um, just tell me how the day was, man. What are you guys thinking? All these conversations we've been having, what are you guys thinking? Nikabangani, guys. Um, are you thinking, hey, this is this is good. Thank you, Fifi. Um, Hopozo, Hi. You know, what are you guys thinking? Are you guys thinking, nah, man, you know what? The next five years, so in Zoom Revit, the next five years, we're going to do the things. Uh, is that the mindset that you guys are in? You know, because obviously, guys, things take time. I need, um, as the Fetch Army, we are trying to be executives. That's what we are shooting for. And in order to become an executive, you have to build the qualities of an executive. You have to start building them now. Not when you become an executive, but what, where's your guys' headspace? Are you guys getting even more motivated and like, no, man, I can do it too, you know? Because you must remember, guys, some of these executives that you see, that they were not born to be executives, right? There's a lot of things that they did in their lives to improve themselves from personal development and whatever the case is in order to get there, you know? So, yeah, you guys just let me know what you're thinking. Let's keep tapping the screen. Let's get to 1K so that we can kickstart this masterclass of today, which I'm very excited about. Um, you know, uh, Izolo, you gave me a lot to think about. I realized I'm the problem and I can change and I cannot wait. Fifi, when people say I am the problem, I get so happy. Ay, Seho, thank you for coming through. When people say I'm the problem, I get very happy. I get, I get frustrated when somebody says that one is the problem, this one is the problem, this situation is the problem. When nobody takes accountability, you know, I, I, I really worry. So I'm glad you took some nuggets. Yes, guys, we've made it to 1.1 likes. Let's keep tapping as we listen. Guys, today's master class important one for those who don't know if you're here for the first time make sure that you follow me we go by the fetch army the name of this family is the fetch army what this basically means is that we fetch goals we fetch dreams we fetch promotions we don't sit we don't cry about situations we don't cry about toxic workplaces we don't cry about toxic bosses we don't do any of that we stand up we understand we are not trees we move right i present these master classes every day two o'clock Go check out my website, kereaempoream.co.za, if you want to know who I am and why I think I'm entitled to tell you all about this. My short story is that I became an executive at age 35 and there were certain tricks and things that I had to do that I was not taught in the textbook or anywhere. And they made me very successful in my career. And I share that in, in information with you, right? I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching if you want us to sort out your LinkedIn profile, because it's the reason why I moved up very quickly. We can do that. If you want the career coaching session because you want to change your careers or you're confused or you're feeling a little bit scared, holla at your boy, careerempoream.co.za, and I will sort you out. Now, let's get into the masterclass of the day. I want to talk to you guys about building the qualities of an executive. All of you guys here deserve to become executives. Nanali, thank you, my friend, for coming through. Right? All of you guys deserve to be executives. All of you guys have the potential of becoming executives. Right? As soon as we take the excuses, we throw them out of the window. All of you guys by merit, purely by looking at you guys, you guys all can be executives. However, there's a shift in mindset and there's a shift in how you do things that needs to take place now. So a lot of people think you become an executive first, then you start behaving like one. But guys, you must remember, you start exhibiting qualities of an executive before you are an executive so that you can be promoted to executive. So you showcase these things before time. You sort of like preempt. And there are three qualities that I had to work on that actually propelled me into that space. And the first one is being comfortable with being alone, right? So all of the companies that I worked for that earmarked me for executive positions, even the executive positions that I still hold today, one of the things that they admired about me 
was that I knew how to spend time by myself because an executive job is one of the loneliest things in the planet. I'm telling you right now. I have a client of mine who just became an executive and she's been booking double sessions because emotionally it's so difficult for her. She's used to being on the ground with the people, but the executive position is a different game plan altogether. Different game plan altogether. If you don't know how to handle being by yourself for long periods of time and doing work by yourself, chances of you being identified as a good candidate for an executive position, they are very low. Very, very, very low. Right? So this is one of the things that you need to be comfortable with. You need to be comfortable with working on your own. I mean, you guys tell me, do you know how many times you will go into an executive's office and it's closed and the guy is sitting inside and is working by themselves? I'm sure you see it all the time, right? When you're passing by the executive's office, the door is closed, the guy is inside working by himself. That's just how executive positions are designed. I'm already working on my own. Okti, then we're in the right space. As long as you are 100% comfortable with it, then you are in the right space. So it's difficult for us as companies to earmark people that can become executives within our organizations when we see that they are constantly, they constantly need the, feel the need to be congratulated by people, for people to clap for them, for people to give them compliments, for people to kiss their bums and all of that, right? When we see you with too much crowds around you, it becomes very difficult for us to earmark you. Nonki, thank you so much for the rose. Right, It becomes difficult for us to earmark you for those positions. So you need to start reducing the people around you right now. And guys, when I'm saying reduce people around you, I'm not saying go around fighting with everybody. And then you're like, yeah, you know what? I don't like these people. I'm not saying be antisocial. I'm just saying that because an executive position is so strategic, you need to apply yourself. So it's one of those things you can't do with multitasking. In executive positions, there's no group assignments, guys. Agnama group assignment in executive positions. You understand? So the first thing you're going to have to do is be comfortable with being alone. And you need to start this now, right? If you can work on projects alone, if you can execute on projects alone, right? And be resourceful. Find your own information. Do your own Google, right? Every now and then you can ask three, two, three people around you, you know, if they know any of it, any additional information that you can use. But you learn independence, only once you've learned independence, then you'll be sorted, right? Um, Navela, I don't like group work. Hey, Manja, I'm suffering because I have to please who I'm... Exactly. Fifi, um, you're not going to be popular. That's the thing when you become an executive, right? So you're going to spend a lot of time alone. But if you're a people pleaser and then you like pleasing people, then you have, a, you, you have an issue, you know? Katleho is saying, already working on my own projects, I'm on. There you go, Katleho. The moment you are fully comfortable with this, let me tell you what we do in the office, right? So as directors of companies, we will walk around the, you know, um, walk around the office, um, you know, just to check on our managers in terms of how they're doing. And the more we identify a manager who's sitting there by the corner and feeling excited and coming up with strategies and pushing things, the more we see people like that, we get really excited and we're like, that's the guy. But the guy who's constantly in the kitchen, gossiping, walking around, Whenever you walk out of the office, this person is at somebody else's desk, cracking jokes, Susan Zitlas Clown, Trevor Noah, right? The more you see people like that all over the place, it's hard for us to say this is a person who can handle being one of our executives, a person who can handle being part of our exco. It really becomes difficult for us to make that conclusion, Right? So that's why being comfortable with, with being alone and demonstrating it. I'm talking about demonstrating it as well. That's what we want to see. Kathleen, Kathleen, I'm executives who are always on their phones. What does this mean? Aksana Spani or when are your executives, I don't understand, right? But you must remember, executives, we delegate a lot. So because we delegate a lot, um, we have a lot of time on our hands, right? The nice thing about being executive is that you can spend a lot of time uh, sipping on cocktails and playing golf. You know, that's, that's just another thing, you know, that can happen that you can do. All right. So, guys, that's, that's, that's one of the things. You need to learn to be comfortable with being alone. That's going to make you a fantastic executive at the end of the day. And then you need to demonstrate that. Your coaching changed my mindset completely. Ah, I'm so glad. I am so, 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 so glad. Yes, Fifi, executives, we, we delegate. 
we delegate a whole lot of stuff because once I'm done with my strategy and as an executive, I will pass it down to the managers to implement it. So it takes a lot of time for me to come up with my strategy. That's why my door is closed and executive, I'm working. Then I will give it to somebody else and then the managers and the Menko, what we call Menko, right? There's Menko that comes before Exco. So the Menko will then execute it and then they will delegate some tasks to their specialists and administrators and so on. So it's like this long chain. So that's why us at the end of the day, after we've delegated, it's time for us to sip cocktails and relax a little bit and be on our phones. So that's the nice thing about that. All right. So very, very critical. Number two, you need to be comfortable with being challenged. Guys, if whenever you get criticism, you break. And we identify that in our main core meetings and whatnot. Chances of us promoting you to an executive position are very low. Because an executive takes the challenge. We, you will get challenged by the board on your strategy. You will get challenged by the board on your thinking. You will get challenged by the board all over. And if you can't handle it, then we have a very big problem. Chances of the moment we can see that you cave every time you are confronted with criticism, whether constructive or not, and you break every time that happens, you are not going to be an executive. Chances of you being promoted to that executive position are very low. Very, 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 very low. So I hope we understand each other. How do you guys handle criticism? I want you guys to ask yourself that question right now at this moment. How do you handle criticism? When you are working in group projects or you are working by yourself or whatever the case is, how do you handle criticism? And if you handle it badly to the point that it hurts you, then we've got problems, right? There's a lot of things that would need to change at the end of the day. So you have to keep asking yourself that question. How do I handle criticism? If you break whenever somebody approaches you and somebody challenges you and it shows chances of you becoming executive or being promoted to an executive position or being successful in an executive position, they're actually low. Very, very, very low. All right. The third one is being comfortable with accountability. Hey, and you see, guys, this is where it happens, right? When you are in a management position, it's easy. Okay, let's say I made an error the other day and my boss picked it up and gave me hell. I was transparent. There's, there you go. That means you are ready to be in that position. You know, you are ready to be in that position. So what happens with a lot of people, they get confronted, they become de defensive. So on the third one, it speaks about accountability. So when I'm speaking about accountability, when you're in a management position or a specialist position, it's easy for you, whenever mistakes happen, to say, no, it's Lerato who did it. I'm going to punish Lerato. No, it's Sipo who did it. No, it's Mu who did it. Right? And it's acceptable at that level. At a director level, when something goes wrong with your department, it's you. You can never imagine a director says, no, get administrator. Just imagine, would you take that director seriously? They're saying to you, no, get administrate. Or think about a CEO of APSA, something goes wrong, and they're like, ah, ah go blame the, 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 the bank teller. It doesn't work like that. So as a CEO, you're going to take accountability. How you fix it, you can go and fix it with your managers and sit down with them and say, hey, you guys screwed over here and here and here, let's fix it. But when you are sitting at Exco and all of the directors are sitting there and something went wrong within your department, you have to say, I screwed up. You can't say Lerato this, Sipo this, the Teller this, and all. You have to say, I screwed up. You have to take full accountability. And that's something that's very difficult to take because it means four days of not sleeping. You understand? It means four days of not sleeping. It means four days of having issues, right? It means four days of chest pains. Kopozo, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Thank you for the hand heart. You got what I'm saying? So, guys... It, that's what happens at Exco. And if you are not ready for these things, we have a very big problem. Very, very big problem. In a situation where they criticize you as a person instead of the faulty work, Mr. Gift, then you are dealing with somebody who's not matured enough to even manage you. They're not matured enough to even manage you.
So you're sitting in an environment that's probably going to stifle you. And like I always say, you're not a tree. You need to think about moving. You need to think about moving, right? Make your three to six months plan. Use the rest of the three, three months to learn as much as you can in that company while you're fixing your LinkedIn profile and then you start networking with other people so that you can get out of there. But if somebody goes for the man and doesn't tackle, listen, they're not worth your brilliance. You must check one post that I put out there that fighting with toxic managers is actually like fighting a very weak opponent and they're not worth your brilliance. That means it's time to move. You are not in the best of spaces because they're going to break you down. They're going to break your character down. That's one thing you want to protect. Guys, when somebody breaks your character down, it's game over. They are finished with you. Done, done, done. Finish with you. So being a director, guys, accountability will sit with you at the end of the day. So my question to you guys is that are you ready to be comfortable with these things? And are there any of the three things that you feel like you are not comfortable with so that we can speak about it and work on it? I get it. You guys are the Fetch Army. Hashtag Fetch Army here. And as the hashtag Fetch Army, what are we trying to achieve, guys? Executive positions. That's what we're shooting for. So how do you guys feel about these three points? And do you feel like it's something that you can achieve as I open the window? I'm back. So do you guys feel like you would be comfortable with this? Is this something that makes you comfortable? Is this something that you can work on? It's doable. Okay. Mam Tolo says it's doable. I'm happy. You know, 100% I'm happy. Right? Yes, guys, let's keep tapping the screen, guys. We're close to 10K likes. Let's double tap, double tap, double tap and get to 10K likes. Right? So, guys, this is what I want you guys to work on. And this is the reality that a lot... So, I mean, and it starts now, right? Um, the client that I had last week who got entry-level position and I was like, I am so glad I found you at entry-level position so that I can tell you certain things that other people will not tell you or that you will not find in textbooks. And this is one of the things that I was speaking to her about. I said, from now, in your entry-level job, try not to get into too, sorry, into too many group assignments and depend on people in order to execute your job. Try being comfortable with being challenged. So when you make a mistake, you can't keep running to the bathroom and cry all the time. You cannot do that. You can't keep going to the bathroom and crying all the time every time you make a mistake. And you are being confronted when it comes to your mistake. Right? So you have to make sure that at the end of the day, you can take being challenged and say, damn, you got me here. Let me see how I can go back and fix it and come back. So a lot of us, I think, have become very soft in that aspect to the point that when we get confronted, we cave immediately or we make this big dramatic thing like, hey, maybe they don't want us to work here anymore. Maybe they are trying to fire us, right? Maybe they are conspiring against us, right? Also, um, nothing wrong with mistakes, but take accountability. Exactly. You know, nothing wrong with mistakes. We're not saying don't make. Actually, I want you guys to make mistakes. I want you guys to fail. I was saying to somebody, you need to get slapped in the face sometimes to wake up. Mike Tyson said everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. You know, when you're preparing for a boxing match, you think you've got a great plan until you get one strong punch in the, fla in the face. And that whole plan, it's out of the window. Now you need to adjust because you studied your opponent wrong. And this is what happens. So these are the three things, guys, that I want you to get comfortable with. If you can't get comfortable with these three things, we've got a problem. We've got an issue. We've got a very big problem. So I want you guys to start working on this, especially if you feel like you are closer to an executive position. So all of you guys that are in management positions, stop walking around in these and in the whole office talking to people because the executives are looking and they're trying to identify who can join our exco. I've got one person now, um, you know, so we've been growing our exco in one of the companies that I'm a director for. And then we've got one guy who really wants to be part of exco so bad and he doesn't understand why he's not part of exco. But if you look at his behavior, you know, you know, the guy who walks around flirting uh, with the receptionist, you walk, I mean, you can't take this guy seriously. You cannot take this guy seriously. So if we, if, if we don't see it, I mean, what do you expect to happen? You expect us to put, us there, to, to put you there because you want it so bad. No, I'm, um, I'm not still a long way to go. I just think like a manager, but I'm not. But Fifi, you'll get there. 
Fifi, you will get there. Start showing the attributes. And guys, listen here. What's going to get you promotions is not just the, the qualifications. So you guys piling yourself up with certificates after certificates. I'm saying, I say this all the time without some kind of personal development. What I'm sharing with you here is personal development. Can you go to school for this? You can't. You can't go to school to learn being comfortable with being alone. You can't go to school to learn how to be comfortable with being challenged. You can't go to school to learn how to be comfortable with accountability. You can't go to school for these things. These things are, pers this is personal development stuff. You understand? This is you spending time with you. Okay, no problem, uh, Fifi. You understand? So some things need, I, I, did a, I did a post in one of my TikToks where I was saying, some of the things that you need to get a promotion don't need school. They need personal development. They need you to spend time with yourself. They need you to talk to yourself. They need you to coach yourself. They need you to make yourself better. But school will not help you. Do you know you're a person who went to school to learn self-confidence? There's no classroom for that. There's no module for that. It's personal development. You work on yourself. So you better get on these three qualities as soon as you can, guys. Let's tap to 10K. Almost there, right? You have to... You have to learn these qualities as soon as you can. Don't wait until it's too late for you to learn these qualities. Don't wait until you are an executive to learn these qualities. Because let me tell you what's going to happen. When you learn these, executive, these qualities when you are an executive, that means your first eight months of being an executive because you wouldn't know, the, you wouldn't possess these qualities, you're going to fail. So your first three months of being an executive are going to be a disaster. So you always learn the qualities before you get into the position. Now, if these qualities are what's required for an executive, imagine if you learn them while you're still in middle management. So that means you're going to quickly move to senior management and you're quickly going to move to top management because you're already attrib showing attributes of a executive, which is executive management. So you're going to move up quicker. So this is personal development stuff that you need to work on. A certificate, quality, you can you can you can go for 10 project management courses with two degrees and one MBA. But if you are not showing these qualities, you will still not get to the highest level of your profession. You will still not. You can get as many degrees, you can come up with as many things as you can. Guys, I had people that were reporting to me with an undergrad qualification and these people had ama masters nama honors but they were reporting to me and people were like no it's unfair because when you are the favorite and whatnot yes i am the favorite i'm the favorite because i possess qualities that are required to lead these people and the people that have mbas and whatnot that were under me they were very operational they couldn't work alone they couldn't handle being confronted they couldn't handle being challenged they had zero accountability every time something goes wrong they throw somebody else under the bus so your MBA and your PhDs won't help you from not having the right qualities to become an executive. This is a two-way journey, guys. While you're working on your academic qualifications, you have to work on your personal development. The two things go together. I feel shift is occurring right now. No problem. So true, hey? Yes, Kanyele. You understand what I'm saying? You, 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 you fix yourself personally and then you fix yourself academically. You do the two at the same time. Now, the big challenge for people is at least academically we get tested. So when we get tested, we can say we passed or not. In personal development, how do we test ourselves? Guys, this one is very easy. Let's start with the first one. How do you test if you are comfortable with being alone? You get an opportunity to test that on a daily basis, right? At work, ask to be involved in certain, in certain projects or show initiative and say, I want to start a project. I'll give an example of the projects that I used to do. So when I was still growing within the sector and I picked up very quickly that I have to demonstrate that I can work on my own and practice it and show. What I used to do is I used to go to my manager. One time I went to, to one of my managers and I said, I want to start a project where on Fridays between 10 and 12 o'clock, I want to bring my team into the boardroom and then we debate policy. 
that affects our industry and sector. So it was my way of upskilling my people and upskilling my own leadership skills, but also to own a project that nobody else does with me. So it was a project that I started. So I had to do planning around it. I had to do reporting around it. I had to do, you, you understand what I'm saying? I had to do it on my own. And as soon as I demonstrated that, they were like, there's something about this guy. So I would sit in the boardroom and, 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 and plan what the debate is going to be next week when it comes to policy and whatnot. I owned it. It's not something that came with the company and then I was just doing what the company is giving me. I was showing initiative. And they would ask me, Smoo, who's working with you on this project? Do you want us to get an, another manager to work with you? And I'd be like, no, I'm cool. I started this thing. I will finish it. And that's how I practice this whole thing, right? Now, how do you practice being comfortable with being challenged? You put up your hand. You start doing things that you know you are not going to do perfectly. You cannot just, guys, be involved in projects at work that you know you're going to pass. That's what we call a comfort zone. So I would get onto the... Pro they, would, they would have a software development project and I would say, I, I want to take it. Guys, we, we have a project where we are changing processes and procedures. If you would like to volunteer, I would take it. And then I don't understand where it is. And then I would come with a PowerPoint presentation and present it and they would go for me. You didn't apply yourself. You didn't think this carefully. You wasted our time. You should have told us that you're not able to do this. I would put myself in those difficult positions. I didn't have to. I could have just chilled and did stuff that I'm good with. Easy for me. Easy for me. But was I going to get any sort of personal development if I had done that and learn to gain these um, executive qualities? No, I wouldn't have. So you have to put yourself out. It's like your exam. It's like your test. It's people that must test you. Being comfortable with accountability, I started this a long time ago with my team. I said, you know what? As from today, I'm making a decision that when something goes wrong, I'm going to say it's me. Then I'm going to learn to protect my staff. That's when I started learning, taking accountability. Guys, I'm telling you, by the time I was 30, 31, whenever I walked into different rooms, people would say, there was one person who used to joke and say, your CEO should report to you. Because at age 31, I was done with all my leadership qualities. Listen, I walked, talked, and sounded like an executive. That's how I sounded. When, whenever I was, I mean, they, the executives used to be afraid to go to conferences in case they bump into people that want to talk, the big talk. And they would send me because they know I can talk the big talk. But I fixed all of my qualities. I fixed all of my qualities. And I know a lot of people are probably thinking, hey, man, so you're telling us that we need to be uptight in life. Guys, I'm not talking about being uptight. Executives are not the same. Not every executive is uptight. I have this personality. People who have met me, people who have seen me speak at events, you know I've got this personality, right? I've got this energy. I'm not an uptight person, but when we get into the boardroom, we get into the bottom of it, I will bring my qualities for an executive. So you guys need to learn this. So if, guys, if you, if in Nabanga, if in Nalim Pinch is a buy, and then you're constantly surrounded by people, guys, start thinking about how you can start reducing that. And like I said, by reducing that, I'm not saying cut people off, turn people into the enemy, don't speak to them anymore. I'm just saying you need to compartmentalize the people. Right. You need to compartmentalize people around you. This thing is clapping on its own. I don't know why. Ne? You need to compartmentalize the people around you. And when you compartmentalize people around you, you need to have your drinking buddies. You need to have your lunch twice a week buddies you need to have your strat strategy together buddies you need to have you need to compartmentalize them but they all can't be there all the time serving the same purpose because that denies you the opportunity to sit and work on your self-development i've got people that i know i've got friends that i see once every six months literally i think last year i didn't see them the whole year because i know you guys this is the purpose that you serve Right. I know those that whenever I feel like going out and having a drink and whatnot, I know there's that group. But they also know that Ew, it happens once in a blue moon that we will, you know, we will meet with Spoo and then go for wine tasting and whatnot. So you need to compartmentalize all of them. If, if you have friends that are just friends that are there 24 7, 24 7, when are you going to work on your personal development? I mean, you, you have to compromise one, right? Or sacrifice one. It's either you sacrifice being an executive 
which I do not advise, or you sacrifice the time that you spend with your friends. So you're not sacrificing your friends. You are sacrificing the time that you spend with your friends. But it does not mean you hate them. That's what we call boundaries at the end of the day. Okay, so guys, let me know if you've got any questions about developing your qualities as an executive. In the meantime, let's double tap the screen. Uh, we've got 11K likes that are loading, you know, so let's go there. Let's hit 11K likes and let's get TikTok to go fetch the rest of our fetch army to come here. And guys, you remember, you must remember, you guys are the fetch army. Our aim is to think differently. If you are thinking the exact same way as the person next to you, then we've got problems. Nanali, thank you so much for the roses, my friend. Really appreciate you. You get what I'm saying? If you and the person who's sitting next to you who complains a lot and who talks a whole lot of rubbish, if you guys think the same and you've got the same values and the same ideology, you haven't fetched army to the fullest yet. Because everybody around you should look at you like you're crazy. You should be talking about being an executive. You should be talking about, you know, building the qualities, a personal development. You know, you should be putting up your hand and saying, I want to take on more projects. I want to be involved in this. The people next to you should not think like you are part of our alliance of doing the bare minimum and spiting the company and whatnot. They should look at you and be shocked. Like, who is this person? You must feel that you are different from the people around you. That's what we call Fetch Army. That means your outlook has changed and your outlook is different. You cannot sound like the same people that are around you. And let me tell you something. The moment you become that, a lot of people are going to pull away from you. So let people with them, themselves out then. It's goodbye. But there comes a time in an age, guys, where it's crunch time. <laughs> Honestly speaking, there comes a time like where things just need to shift. Things need to change. Things can't be the same anymore. And when that time comes, there's difficult decisions that need to be made. There's a position I'm eyeing. As soon as I'm in, I'm going for that exact position. Mamtolo, thank you very much. It's baby steps, right? You take the next one, you take the next one, you take the next one, you get into the executive position. But one thing I can tell you guys is that you're going to have to make major changes. Major, major, major changes. There's nobody that I know who from the age of 21 to the age of 35 or 40 when they became an executive, they were the same person for that, that whole time. It's impossible. There's a point where you must sit and say, things need to change about me. I need to start being comfortable with being alone. I need to start being comfortable with being challenged. I need to be... Don't sit with people who always protect you. Every time you're getting confronted, they come to you like asking me, about to blind more, spanning more. Yes, by the line, I'm And then now you get hyped up. Yeah, it's like, you know what, as far as far. And then everybody gets hyped up. You should not be like that crew that does that. And that comes with you working on yourself and say, listen here, honestly speaking, I'm married. And guys, I mean, be honest with me. Think of it. Please, please do me this favor. Think of an executive in your office and describe them for me. Right? These three qualities that I have here, you see they're going to come out. Tell me one executive. And in Kulmang executive, executive is young people. Guys, I'm not talking about those executives that are just there to abuse people. Or even if it's not in your organization. Think about an executive that you like. There are executives outside, right? I'm not sure if you guys, maybe Lerata Basitsane, uh, there's Wendy Luhabe. Um, there's different executives who pick up. Think about these women that serve in these big boards or these men that serve in these big boards. And politicians don't count, right? Then those state-owned state entities, they don't count, right? But Sim Chabalala, CEO of Standard Bank and whatnot. Think about those people and tell me what their characters look like. And you tell me if you think when they were 21, they were the same. The way they speak, the way they carry themselves, right? The way they accept accountability when it comes to things. The way they don't mind being debated. You hear them when they're getting interviewed by, you know, um, on TV and on radios and whatnot, right? Whenever they get challenged about specific things, you can see they stand tall and they are comfortable with it. Because if in Kangu in Chelamanga, go study those people. Guys, that's what I'm saying. When you get onto YouTube, watch things that make sense. Right? I'm going to go into YouTube right now and I want to check one interview of a CEO. Right? And that's what I always do. You just go onto YouTube and then you just click CEO interview and then see what comes up. And then you tell me you don't think those people at some point in their lives they had they said it's crunch time. It's crunch time. Something has to change. I have to be the guy. I have to stop being the guy who 
who sits with a group of people and gossips in the kitchen and um, always complaining about employers and is proud of doing the bare minimum um, and then is, is loving the comfort zone. The difference between, because I mean, like if you think about how we started our careers, when I became an executive, the people that I started my career with, none of them were executives when I became an executive. Some of them still work now in management. And I mean, I think retired and I go corporate, I'm running my own business. So there was a group of us, but I stood out out of all of them. And I said, I have to make something. Yes, there were two or three that um, maybe also became executives, but I don't know because obviously we lost contact, right? Because I don't drag people along with me. But you listen to those CEOs, guys, and then you tell me, Butibona, they remain the same from age 21 up to the point where they became executives. There's no way. So they come, guys, there comes a time. There comes a time. There comes a time where you have to be just a little bit serious. And I think a lot of us dread being serious because you're like, ah, now I'm going to be the uptight person. It doesn't mean that, guys. I mean, I like to believe I'm still one of the most fun people. You know, at least that's what my nieces and nephews say. And my brothers and my sisters. And a couple of people outside because family has to say that. I, I'm still a dope person. I'm still a have fun kind of person. But there's a lot of changes that I had to make. There's a little bit of being stuck up that I had to adopt in order to get myself to where I need to be. Lisa, thank you for following me. Guys, make sure that you follow so that you can know whenever I go live. I do these master classes um, every day at 2 o'clock. And for those who are new here, guys, this family were called the Fetch Army. You can see the hashtag there, Fetch Army. And what the Fetch Army means is that we are a group of people that believe we're going to be fetching promotions. We're going to be fetching exco positions. We don't behave like normal people who sit and complain about jobs and toxic environments and bosses. We stand up, we do something. We are not trees, we move. We believe when we go for interviews, we own interviews. We believe when we go for promotions. <laughs> So that's the important part of it. That's what we do as the Fetch Army. And I need you guys to stand up and think differently and understand that you cannot be the same person. You cannot be the same person. You're going, you're going to have to change. So I've given you the three qualities, guys. Are you going to be working on these qualities? Are you going to start being comfortable with being alone? Are you going to start being comfortable with being challenged? Are you going to start being comfortable with accountability. Thank you, Hopozo. Let's step to 15K, guys. Let's step to 15K as we listen. Right? Are we going to be working on these things? Right? Are we planning to commit ourselves to these things, guys? Guys, with the Fetch Army, I need you to understand something. Once you come into this live, you need to understand you're part of the Fetch Army now. And we fetch. We fetch. So whatever you've been told about workplaces, guys, whatever myths you've been hearing... Yeah, this is this is not how things work. Hey, hey, but corruption, get brown envelope. You have to pay this and stuff like that and whatnot. And all of these conspiracy theories, the Fetch Army does not play in that space. We do not play in that space. Then you start hyping each other up, and then everybody believes it. And then you take that message, you pass it to your kids, and then your kids are just born hopeless, Jay. Or they grow up hopeless because you keep passing down all of this conspiracy theory. The Fetch Army does not do that. Do we deny that there are issues when it comes to um, some bribes and whatnot to get jobs and people sleeping with people? No, we're not stupid. We're not denying that. We are just saying we're not going to partake. Neither are we going to let it stop us. That's the thing about the Fetch Army. It, we, we, how many people have done it without having to sleep with anyone? I did it without sleeping with anyone. Guys, please. Are you sure you didn't sleep? No, guys, I didn't sleep with anyone. Okay. I did it purely, clearly, growing myself, upgrading my thought leadership, upgrading my qualities, upgrading my thinking. That's how I did it. And I'm sharing that with you guys, that you guys can do it too. And I'm not saying you guys pie in the sky and say, listen here, uh, if you manifest on it, if you pray on it, it's going to happen. Yes, you can do that. But guys, I'm giving you practical things like work on this and demonstrate it and increase your chances. And network, network so much that you are given a platform to demonstrate this. Because it's pointless to learn all of these things and learn all of these qualities, but you've got nobody to demonstrate it to. That's why yesterday I was speaking about and then people who are doing all sorts of funny things to the point that nobody pays attention to you anymore. 
By the time you want to demonstrate to these guys that, listen, yeah, I've changed, I've grown, right? I'm now comfortable with being alone. I'm now comfortable with taking challenges. Nobody is looking at you. So you are failing to demonstrate that. I used to demonstrate this a lot on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn was my testing ground, guys. LinkedIn was my testing ground. So I would go on to LinkedIn and challenge a specific policy. I remember somebody said to me, Spoo, how do you handle people coming for you like this on LinkedIn? I said, it was part of my test. It wasn't always easy. But I had to put myself in a position where I was challenged by people on a public platform. On a public platform. Then I started doing panel discussions. And in panel discussions, guys, remember, you are in Smart Procurement Life at Devon ICC. And it's full. And it's full. And they're putting me on the same panel with somebody who opposes my views. In front of directors and executives. And this person is going to come for me and he's going to challenge me. So I had to put myself in those tough situations. And people would run away from these panel discussions. And I'd put my hand up and I'd say, I'll take this panel discussion. And I remember the marketing uh, communications manager saying to me, Smoo, you're about to mess up your reputation here. Because this person who's, who's going to be sitting next to you is very ruthless. And they're going to challenge you. I said, then they must bring it on. Clearly, they don't know who I am. Right? Smoo, general of the Fetch Army. There was no Fetch Army back then. Right? But there was Fetch Army mentality back then. So I would go for these panel discussions. Radio, TV. I remember they used to call me for TV interviews and they're like, well, Smoo, we're warning you now. There's somebody who's really opposing this whole thing that you represent. And I said, I'll come on national TV and make a fool of myself if I have to. But if I don't learn how to do these things now, I will never make it to an executive position ever. And guys, I became comfortable with being challenged. That's why even now you can challenge me. And I'm comfortable with it. And then I became comfort comfortable with accountability. I remember one day, one director saying to me, Smoo, it won't help you to sit here and take full accountability knowing that Lerato messed up this project. I said, Lerato works under me. I'm responsible for Lerato. So the problem is me. I said this, we were sitting in Menko. And I said, the problem is me. I must take full accountability for my department. So it's me. I don't want you guys going and approaching Lerato and skipping me. Lerato and them, they are my people. I will take accountability. You want to know what went wrong with this project is me. I should have been managing Lerato. I should have been given Lerato support, but I forgot Lerato because I had this meeting. Hence, she didn't have enough support. That's how she messed up. It is me. And the more they saw those qualities, I'm telling you, things changed for me. They're like, this guy is playing, this guy is playing at low level here. This guy is, is executive, this is executive stuff. This is executive material. We are ready for this guy. I, I did not come up with certificates. I didn't pile myself up with Excel courses. I didn't pile myself up with project management certificates. I did not pile myself up with PhDs and, 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 and PhDs and MBAs. I piled myself up with personal development. It's a certificate that you don't see. Personal development is a very important certification and is a very important qualification that you do not see. But I'm telling you, once you demonstrate it, Hanan, thank you so much for the roses. But once you demonstrate it, it's one of the most valuable things. You know the saying that you can't teach attitude. It's a saying that we use in corporate that says we, you can't teach attitude. So basically what that means is in certain instances, somebody has come with less qualifications, but we employed them because of their attitude and their, their go-getter spirit and their personal development and them being ready for an executive position. We could see that this is a project we can work on. Certificates are easy. Take this person, send them to vets for three years. Then they'll come back with a PCOM. That's okay. We'll pay for it as a company. But you, you, you cannot teach attitude because when you tell people, work on yourself, right? Get yourself a mentor. Get yourself a life coach. Get yourself this. People are very reluctant to do that. So you're going to sit with an MBA with a very horrible attitude and a very horrible work ethic and not believing they need to do You understand that 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 is not going to work. That is not going to happen. So it's very important, guys, that we work on ourselves. Personal development is the most important certificate. So I've given it to you guys. These are the qualities that I want you guys to start building. I want you guys to start building these 
I really want you to. Personal development, it's an unseen qualification. I hear you. Exactly, Okti. It's one of the most important certificates. You can't put it on a table. You can't frame it. You can't put it on the wall. But let me tell you something. In an interview, it's respected. When it's time for you to become an executive, it is respected. It weighs more than a degree the higher you move. Personal development, it weighs higher than a degree. The, you know, more than a degree, the higher you move. So guys, I'm leaving this here. I hope you guys are really going to work on this. I hope this made sense to you. I hope you're feeling the fire and you're saying we're going to implement these things. We're going to work on these things, right? I really hope you enjoyed this. So guys, as I give you shout outs, you know how we do. If you're new in this life, make sure that you're following me. But also know that we are the Fetch Army. There you go. Okti has started the train, guys. So please put for me in the comments, hashtag Fetch Army, which means it's you signing to the universe that you're going to be working on everything that we work on and you're going to adopt this mentality. So please, guys, follow the train. Okti has started it. Nana Lee has gotten in. Ceci K has gotten into it. I'm going to give you guys shout outs as you put the hashtag Fetch Army in the comments there. Right. So, Koputso, thank you for coming through. Thank you for the gifts. You're very, very, very kind. I really appreciate you. And thank you for motivating us to go to gym. Halalelo, thank you for coming through. Thank you for the roses. Really appreciate you. Nanalis, Kim Samsekazi, my friend, my moderator, my administrator. Yay, Zonki Zinto, thank you so much. You know, um, I hope to see you tomorrow. Um, Leseho, Rakadi, thank you for coming through. Thank you for the gifts. I really appreciate you. Lesedi, thank you for the gifts. I really, really appreciate you. Mr. Gift. Um, you know what? Keep shining, bro. Keep shining. Uh, and thank you for coming through. Mam Tolo, thank you for coming through. Listen, keep eyeing those positions. Let's go. Let's move. Let's do this thing. Shamin, I see you. Ceci K30, I see you. But Tobile, my chief moderator, appreciate you more than you know. We are nothing without you in this life. User 91, thank you for coming through. Sitabila, I see you. E to the MVP, I see you. Fifi, the dramatic with the drama. Thank you for coming through. Um, you're going for that exco. You're going to get that exco. You know, user 58, I see you. Tay May, I see you. Zim356, I see you. Opa Boy, I see you. Maloya221, I see you. Pascal Mesh, I see you. Kunge Delicacy, I see you. Bontle Tsakane, I see you. Uh, Shibele, I see you. Yvonne, I see you. Edward, I see you. Okti, my friend, thank you for coming through. I see you. And Tan... Tanda Nandi Sa, I see you guys, all of you. Thank you for coming through. I really appreciate you. Okay, let's wait for 15k likes and then we're gonna jump out of here. Then Kavaya, you know. But I really appreciate you guys. Um, you know, come through and please go check out the WhatsApp group, guys. Go join the WhatsApp group. Um, you know what? Um I I I I'm gonna be dropping some articles. These images that you see here. I share them in the WhatsApp group as well, you know. So, yeah, guys, join the WhatsApp group. Go to kerempodium.co.za. Go book your one-on-one -on -one session. You know, um, let's do this thing. Uh, go read the blog articles that I put out there. And, guys, let me know if you've got any questions for me. You guys have been booking sessions like crazy. I mean, just before this session, I had another session with Itumeleng. We were working on her LinkedIn profile, you know. So, thank you. Shout out for supporting the business as well, you know. And then, yeah, guys, I really, really appreciate you. We're almost at 15K. Let's double tap the screens, guys, so that we can go and eat lunch, you know. Um, but I really appreciate you guys. I wish you guys all the best. And I believe in all of you guys. I feel like whatever we need to do, we can do. I really believe that whatever we need to achieve, we can achieve. 15k likes done, my people. Fetch army. Go rest. I will see you tomorrow, 2 o'clock, for another masterclass. Really appreciate you guys, my future executives. And remember, we...